So I don't even know where to start, but maybe you can just tell us what God's been doing. Really, maybe like for, for those who might watch this or listen to this later, like what's what got you to DFW and then where what you're doing with all the strategy coordinator stuff. Yeah, so I was I was in Tennessee working at a legacy church mobilizing people and I, I found that was just way more catalytic than what they could handle. Uh, like everyone mobilized that wanted to be mobilized and it was like, oh, man, this isn't fun anymore. And so we lived in DFW for a few years um, in 2016 to 2018 and really just felt like it was home. And so it was like, hey, let's just let's just go back to what what felt like felt like home. And so we had some friends here that were pursuing movement. We we kind of, you know, grit, grit our teeth and, and learning principles and practices of movement and DFW. So we're like, hey, let's just go back and do that because really our heart is uh, unreached people groups. Yeah. And the Lord just hasn't opened open the door for us to mobilize overseas. And the cool thing is, is God did open the door for those to, to be diaspora in North America. And so just looking at, at cities that was a good fit for our family and uh, you know where we had existing relationships. So we moved back to DFW about a year ago. The cool thing that a lot of people don't know is um, we grew in faith a lot during during this transition period because we we left a job where you know it, it paid the bills. We sold our house and we were like, we don't know what to do, but the Lord is calling us away from this place. So we bought we bought a camper, like a travel trailer. I've got five kids. That was and, a party. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we we hopped in the camper. And we're like, we don't know where we're going. But we're, the Lord's released us from here. And so it's kind of, it kind of odd that the Lord released us from something without a clear direction. It's almost like, like Abraham, like, go to the place that I'll show you. And so we were just going in faith. And it was like, okay. And so we, we had joined an organization. And that organization had, uh, you know, like, orientation or new hire training, whatever, whatever it was called. And it was based in DFW. And so we were like, well, we'll just, the whole family will go. There's no reason for me to get an airplane. We have our houses on wheels. Let's go. <laughs> and on on the way here we're at a rest stop in arkansas and a friend calls me and he says hey i want you to pray about something and he starts to describe like this this vision for this role of uh tub cities in north america engaging diaspora and you know really what i said is like it's like it's like brother whatever you call the role like that's what i was going to do and he's like he's like okay he's like the only caveat is we want this person to be based in DFW. And I said, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> good timing. <clears throat> it was it was good timing. And so literally, we got here with the camper, and we haven't left since. But uh, as many of you know, like the housing situation in North America has been pretty crazy with, with COVID and just like supply and demand. So we lived in the camper for 10 months. And so we moved in, moved into our house about two months ago. And so that's, that's what got us to DFW. Man, that's awesome. So it sounds like it was not uh, your idea, <laughs> but the Lord has really set you up to step into this next season for such a time as this sounds like. So what's the Lord been doing since then? Yeah. So once, once we got here, we really just started to, to network and, and build connections, build relationships. We, we were, you know, running the play, sharing the gospel, seeing disciples made. And two, two things that, that immediately popped up is we just had a real opportunity to step into to coach and train apartment missionaries. And so right now we have eight teams in, in apartments engaging in movement principles and practices and see, seeing a lot of fruit, uh, seeing, seeing group start and, and not just group start but disciples made disciples trained so like people coming to faith and now they're sharing the gospel and, and right now i think we're getting pretty close to maybe a second generation group start and so that's in the last i guess six months since the beginning of the year seven months so we, we've seen that and then the other thing that we've seen is there's just been so much more openness in the church of jesus christ to to engage people of a different culture and and a lot of people saying, yeah, I see it, you know, that, that Act 17, like the Lord is controlling the movement of people. 
but they're saying we don't we don't know what to do like well, they don't know where to start sure it's a daunting yeah. task yeah it's 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 huge and you know the thing the thing about uh cities that I, I was just listening to uh what one of your podcasts the other day is like it's cities aren't complicated they're com there's complexity and 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 people are just completely lost because either they get super uh, micro focused and they feel like they're not doing enough or they think from a total macro perspective with no micro strategy and nothing gets done you get a lot of talking going if you spend all your time in macro because i think in that same podcast you're He's referring to the one that you did with David uh, Brudrick. Could be or when we talked to Is that to. the one? Is that the one you were talking about? Or David, yeah. Yeah, so um, one of the things that was very interesting to me about that part was whenever he made the transition to say, because of the complexity, no mm -hmm. one person, well, you could spend your lifetime. You yeah. spend your whole lifetime trying to figure out a city and you would never actually understand that city because no. it's like you and I have kicked around. It's like a living, breathing organism. It's constantly in flux. It's constantly changing. It's constantly in movement. And so um, we're, we're really curious about how even some of your SC thinking, strategy coordinator training thinking, yeah. kind of flows into some of that conversation that Mark had with David Brudrick about how you find people who get a focus and then you train them and we trust that the Lord will raise up the leaders that he needs to go after all of this complexity that we can't by any stretch of the mind understand, yeah. but the Lord has, he gets it, right? Yeah. And is in the process of calling people to that. So um, good segue, but we really want to hear a lot about what you're doing in terms of strategy coordinator training. And, and maybe even as you do that, Bud, could you just define what is that? What is a strategy coordinator? Um, and then jump into that for us. Yeah, so may, maybe I'll, I'll frame it in, in this of like how, how I view just the role as a strategy coordinator, how I'm approaching training is because of complexity, like it has to be processed and not just practice. And, and, and what I mean by that is every segment and sub-segment, it's gonna be different practices, but can we develop a process that, that will transcend? And so sometimes the word that's used is a fractal, where on, on a micro level and on the macro level, the same process will, will work, right? And so like, what 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 is what are the irreducible minimums? And typically, we come back to the four fields to five parts and say, "Hey, this is the fractal. How how does each of how does each segment, all the way from the family unit to a city unit, it's, the tools are going to change, the team is going to change, the training is going to be different, entry is going to be different. But what is the process that we can follow? Wow. With that in mind. Really what we've, we've been doing, we, we have a team of, of practitioners who uh, have kind of collectively come together and said, hey, we, we see value of engaging diaspora in global North American cities. It's, it's a strategic entry. The Lord has brought them. And if we follow Acts 17, what, for what reason? So that they, that they may find him, right? And, and none of us are too far, right? And, and so we've been working on this diaspora training cohort, which is really like, from, from a, a micro level to a macro level in, in four phases. And at the beginning, we're like, hey, this is gonna be one tool we're gonna roll out. But as we've been working on it, it's really between four different things. So the first one is helping people uh, determine a people group to engage or a segment. So it could be defined as a people group, a geography. And then we want them to be informed because we want it to be strategic, Yeah. right? So. If we only have so many laborers, we want we want to move our resources in, in a direction that's that's strategic and fruitful. So that's that's defining uh, maybe a church's or individual's background. Maybe maybe it's a Hispanic, and it's like, hey, right now we're seeing we're seeing God do amazing things with Latino brothers and sisters among Persians. Hey, maybe you should consider that, right? So helping people go through a process, and again, it's not necessarily a leader saying go do this, but like. So you prayfully go through this process, look at who's in your city, look at you know people like Global Gates or Joshua Project, how they elevate certain people groups over another, and say, we want to push to one where God will work, and two, where there's the greatest need. And so it's kind of like this blend between those two is really what the process tries to get to. And then once they have the people group, we want them to understand the people group or segment that they're going to be engaging. So I'm, I'm going to use people group because it really could be a segment, like or a subsegment. It could be like bikers, like that's a people group, right? It's a segment. 
but then have them go through a process of understanding the people group for the purpose of not just knowing, but then to determine and define strategy. So we say we want to learn about a people group, and then we want to learn from a people group. So how we're forming that is, one, it's very broad, like, hey, here's major worldviews and religions, like just one, one page, read this. And that's like, we don't want to give them a lot of information. We want it to be process driven. But then we're giving them tools to do anthropological research of that people. And then so I'm learning about the people group. And then we say, okay, now in your research, you should know where they're at. Go have a relationship with them. And then we're doing ethnography research. Yeah. So I'm learning from the people group. And I'm getting inside information. I'm building relationships. And so I'm narrowing down maybe even a sub-segment. Maybe I just want to engage this people group in this part of the city that's at a refugee, which would be different than someone who came 15 years ago and now owns a business. So we're narrowing, and then we, then we want to engage the people group. And so then basically we're, we're putting together a process of developing tools and training through, through the lens of four fields. And then the final one is tracking among the people group. Tracking meaning, hey, tracking progress because we want to be informed. And hey, if we're not seeing progress, let's not be too proud to say maybe our implementation plan is, needs to be tweaked. And so then in that, even doing case studies of, uh, you know, taking really we're, we're making fictitious field activity reports. But for the purpose of modeling, hey, this is how you can look at 10 or 12 or 15 field activity reports among the people group. The trend to, hey, maybe we should approach entry differently because this this brother in another city engaging this people group is entering and you know maybe through international markets versus versus you know homes and say hey let's let's just let's just run that play for six months and so always learning but basically it's broken down and choosing the people group learning uh, or knowing about your people group engaging the people group and then tracking or, or adjusting your implementation plan Sounds like a pretty good process. How far have you gotten um, through that process with some people in training and 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 uh, actual hands-on experience at this point? Yeah. So the first the first phase is done. We've had people go through the first phase, and so that's really really like a mobilization phase, like choosing choosing the people group. We have people right now uh, in DFW going through the second phase, which is knowing. So like there there's there's a brother that's working primarily with Arabs, who's doing ethnography interviews. And, and two, we want to catalog that information and make it available. So like everything that we're doing is open source. Basically, everything that's good, we're throwing into a Google folder and it's just open source. And, and understanding too, like, hey, take this and make it better. Um, you know, we like if this isn't my, my baby. Like we've got, we've got um, eight people working on this. I'm just kind of the guy that's making it come into, one, in, into a usable pool. And right now we're housing everything in Google Classroom just because it's a good place to house stuff. Sure. Um, but two, we're putting in a PDF with linked files. So that way, like, okay, you don't want to use Google Classroom. Here's here's a PDF and everything's linked. That's exciting. Yeah. It's good thinking. Sounds like great thinking to me. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it continues to progress. We want to continue to hear more. I don't know, maybe an invite to come and chat with us again, probably. <laughs> hint, hint. Man, that's really great, bud. And it sounds like with each of those phases, you're, you're uh, identifying ways to, to break it down in a simple way to get into what needs to happen and sequentially in that process. But like you said, that can fractal uh, from small to large. So it's exciting. Yeah. And, and two, if I can add, what, one of the things like, and I've, I've been around a lot of training, so we're doing it in a cohort model. So it's like a weekly, weekly gathering. But we're, we're putting together, and from the very beginning, this is one thing I was pretty insistent on, is it's, it's three parts. So the training each week is three parts. One is information. We can't get away from just information because inf information uh, leads to, you know, if motivated to movement in the sense of doing something. So uh -huh. information, and then it becomes uh, an assignment. You're doing something. And so early on, like the very first lesson is we want people to have the right motivation. So we're, we're taking them through Genesis Revelation study. But then later on, like in ethnography interviews, it's like, here, here's uh, 
questionnaire for an ethnography interview. Here's the information. Mm. Now your assignment is like, you go do it. And then the third piece is the debrief. So you have a player coach who is asking probing questions. And, and really it's, you know, questions like, hey, what did you read online about this people group that you found that just to be wrong in your ethnography interview? And just start pulling out this, you know, this, this thought in their mind. It's like, I can't go into a conversation with, with 100% presuppositions of what I think this person experiences or knows or, or believes. Wow. Wow. So in the process right now, what have been some of the hardest things to kind of overcome, get people to do in the training? Just to, what are the things you really had to push at to get uh, to work or to uh, move forward? So this is, this is what, what I foresee as a potential barrier is this timing, right? And so in my mind, it's like, hey, we're doing this on a weekly rhythm. But some of these things are going to take a lot longer than a week. And so really in my mind, the biggest challenge is the container that we do it in. Mm. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I, I don't want to say, hey, let's disconnect for six weeks and go do this. But then the question is, okay, what do we, what do, we do for the six weeks while you're trying, trying to get these interviews done? Yeah, sure. That's the biggest challenge. And kind of where I'm landing is each of our debrief meetings is a three-thirds format. So we're just probably going to continue three thirds and like let people be where they're at, and we don't yeah. move forward until the until the majority are ready. Yeah. That yeah, because sometimes, yeah, sometimes if you meet too much about that, and it, every week feels like an accountability, people get a little bit deflated because they feel like each week they're not really accomplishing as much. Whereas if they get to six weeks, and then mm -hmm. six weeks they can tell you all the stories that happened, and it seems a really celebratory because they're able to go, man, I accomplished a bunch, yep. but week to week to week, it doesn't seem like that much. So that's yeah, that's a great observation. Man, anything else you want to share with us on this as you're rolling this out? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the only thing, you know, I, I would share is, you know, once we get a kind of a finished product, it's like, we really just want to invite everyone to take a look at it, you know, open the hood. And, and again, it's going to be four different phases. And so like the beautiful thing of breaking it up is like, you may already have a people group focus. You don't, you don't need the module, choose your people group. You, you may have been working among them for a while, but maybe you've bypassed like truly doing an ethnography interview or, or something like that. So it's like, Hey, just pick that one up. You've already been engaging. Um, but yeah, just, just look at it and see like how, how, how it can serve you and serve the work. Cause that's, that's the purpose of, you know, me kind of facilitating this team and putting it together and every person that's working on it, that's their heart is yeah. it would be a tool to, to impact lostness and glorify by God. Wow. So somebody is listening to this, watching this, and uh, that's them. You're talking to them. Uh, what would you like them to do next? Yeah, I would, I would say send, send me an email and then we can basically just have a conversation. And I, I just love to hear from you, like, hey, where, where are you at? And then how can this best serve you and, and the work? And then really start putting together from those conversations, cohorts related either around, I think it's ideal either around geography or affinity. So like, hey, we have four, four or five people that are working among Muslims. Hey, let's just go ahead and gather you all together because you're going to have more, uh, more similarities in conversation. Or, you know, if we have four people in Portland, Oregon, like, hey, let's just gather you together and, and maybe the Lord's going to team you all together. Yeah. To impact That's great. So could you share what that email is? And then we'll also put it in the uh, link below all this. Yeah, it's bud.houston, B-A, like born again, 2011 at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, people can check that out and, and hopefully you get some uh, responses because, man, sounds like the Lord's on what you're doing and uh, look forward to hearing how it develops. Yeah, I love all of it. And I, I look forward to hearing some stories about, you know, how, do, how does it go? Some of the humor, some of the wins, some of the losses, all of the above that go into trying to figure this out. So we're praying with you, brother. Thankful for everything you're doing. Yeah, if, if I can tell one, one story real quick. Absolutely. Like God, God, God has used this. So there's a brother that's working on putting it together with me, but we're going through it as we're building it, right? So it's like, mm. and so we we were like, hey, we, we just need to go, we just need to go find find some people. So this was about six weeks ago. We're like, hey, we're going to go to this mosque and uh, just see see who we meet. And uh, so quickly we got we got cornered, and uh, you know, like the the community uh, conversation guy, like 
he, he, he took us in his office and, you know, we talked for about an hour. We share the gospel with him and we kind of get to the end. And uh, I say, hey, brother, where, where are you from? Because he talked like 95% of the time. He didn't want to talk. And so I was like, brother, where are you from? And he said, he said, Senegal. And so the brother that's with me, he lived in Senegal for 17 years and speaks French and Wolof. And immediately he, he talks to him in Wolof. And our conversation went 180 degrees different, right? And so even just like as that story, and I'm not encouraging people to learn language, right? But if you know the people group you're after, if you can just learn phrases and, and greetings and their language, like that's just an example of how he understood that people group. And so we, we've had this text conversation. He, he owns a market in a bazaar. So the next week we went to his market almost all Wolof people. And, and there's a lot of people who are open in that market, far more than this guy that we met, but he was, he was an entry. And, and if you know about people groups, man, Wolof are, are pretty resistant people of the gospel from, from West Africa. There's a lot in New York City. And, and God just opened the door through us just being, being faithful, but also too, just like, hey, let's, let's just go do what we're, we're you know, creating this training to do and just see what God does. Yeah, go find some good candy from Senegal at the market and go every week and just buy some candy and talk to them <laughs> over and over again. I yeah. love it. It's awesome. Great story. All right. Well, this is good, bud. And we'll have to keep talking about this because clearly God's working in and through you in this. So look forward to hearing more. Yeah, thanks, guys.